G'day, welcome to J Tackle TV. Well, it's definitely winter time here in South East Queensland, and come winter, a lot of people's thoughts turn to tailor fishing. Tailor fishing, of course, is very traditional, and nothing gets more traditional than your trusty gang hook and your trusty LV outfit here. This is typified by a big 13 foot 6 rod, big 6.5 inch LV. A lot of people got them, a lot of people use them, and it's a look, it's a really good and effective outfit. But there are other ways, and things that are certainly catching on and becoming a lot more popular and times a lot more effective. And that would be generally throwing lures. One of the great things about lure fishing, of course, is that your outfit's a whole lot lighter and a whole lot easier to cart around and a whole lot easier to use for a long period of time. And this would be a great example of what we're talking about. So here's we've got a little carbon fibre tailor casting rod. Little 5,000 size reel, beautiful light little outfit, hold it comfortably in one hand, cast it all day, fantastically easy to use, long casting, very, very effective thing. So there's quite a different approach with those two outfits that we just looked at. Your LV outfit normally have monofilament line on it and 15 pounds, a pretty common approach. The LV works really well with mono, tends to suit the type of bait fish we, that we're doing on the beach, you know, relatively cheap and cheerful and it all tends to just fit into the type of uh, fishing that that LV would normally do. With your spin outfit, 99% of the time you're going to be running braid on that. A good size guesstimate would be 15 to 20 pound, so that's actually going to give you a stronger line than what you'd normally be using on that big out LV outfit, but because it's braid, much, much thinner, and your casting distance should be at least as far as the LV outfit, and possibly further if, when the outfit's in the right hands. So. What we're talking about is lure fishing, of course, and that'll open up a whole new perspective. Now, with traditional algae fishing, a lot of people did use lures, and the old spinner was something that had gone back for many, many years. There's a lot of new, exciting things out there. Probably one of the best representatives of that is something like this, which is a uh, Maria Macho Lachia. So really classy little casting lure, and you can see there, beautiful colors, nice holographics. Most of these lures come fitted with treble hooks and that causes some problems when you're tailor fishing. They'll oftentimes tear themselves free of the hooks and if they're jumping at all, they'll, you'll find you'll lose a lot of fish to that. So we would always rig these guys with single hooks. And the great advantage of a single hook is the gape, uh, increased gape and the extra holding power that that would give you. So you've got your treble hook here that would sit on standard on this lure really quite a small gape of hook, really quite a small bend of hook, so very limited holding power. This hook that we would replace it with is a decoy sergeant hook and you can see that a much, much bigger hook by comparison. That will actually punch in around that fish's jaw and provide a lot better holding power. Fish is jumping, you know, big fish fighting hard, all those sorts of scenarios. Definitely the only way to rig your chrome lures. So we'll take that guy off. And of course, if you haven't got a pair, uh, you must get yourself a pair of split ring pliers to do this job. It's gonna make your life so much easier. So now our hook's rigged like that on our lure. Naturally, that hook could go either hook point up or hook point down. Most people tend to put it hook point up, it tends to look a little bit better. It doesn't seem to make much difference as far as the fish goes. So if you're going to throw a spinner out for your tailor, then absolutely rig it with a single hook. You'll catch more fish and you'll lose less fish. And if you're going to release your fish, they'll be released in a whole lot better condition. What we find though is that there's a lot more effective lures out there on the market. And one of the things that a lot of tailor anglers are worried about is the cost of their lures. Obviously, a gang hook and a pill is pretty inexpensive. You're going to lose that to a fish, not such a big deal. Soft plastics are going to be one of those types of lures that are going to give you an inexpensive way to catch your fish. One of the best, in fact, probably the very best for this type of fishing is your trusty snapback jerk shad. It is a five-inch lure, and 
Snapbacks are the type of lure that are made out of uh, elastic material, the same sort of thing as you'd see in your Z-Man range. Basically that means it's super stretchy, really, really tough and durable. Now Taylor can bite it off eventually, but you'll be able to land oftentimes, um, you know, up to a half a dozen fish on the one plastic before it be becomes bitten up too much that you can't use it. There's a real art to putting these things on hooks and getting the best result for them. Any of your plastics that you see that have a pocket in them like this, uh, are rigged with the hook shank in the pocket. This is a new hook from TT. It's a headlock hook designed specifically to hold these types of lures. One of the things that you really want to do is to rig these straight. Your hook is rigged straight into the pocket that's in the lure. It's then pushed over the grub keeper, pushed right up to the head of the lure. Naturally the lure is upside down at the moment on the hook, so we'll turn this guy the right way up, drop the hook point into this little pocket, make sure he's coming out the middle of the back of the lure. You see he sits nice and straight when you rig like that. Down inside your pocket you can see the actual shank of the hook in there. That's just going to give it an easy and quick way to rig dead straight every time. So it's got that super stretchy stuff, hard to tear off, fabulous little action in the water, jig head range up to an ounce if you need it to cast a long distance. Overall cost obviously sub five dollars generally speaking for your lure and uh, well affordable and, and able to be lost if that's what you're thinking about on the beach. One of the things we really need on the beach is casting distance. And it's a given that we're going to get those with our chrome slugs and to a certain extent with our soft plastics because we can add whatever head is available in whatever size that we need. When we move to our favourite types of lures and their hard bodied lures, it's not so obvious which lures are the best because we need that casting distance. And a lot of people are familiar with the type of lures that we're going to show you now, a minnow style of lure and a pencil type of lure, but they're more familiar with them in the weights that would be used for barra fishing, and not so much the weights that are going to give us the casting distance that we need on the beach. We're just going to run you through those things and why they're so good. In fact, why we find that they're the most successful and useful tailor lures that we've ever used. Starting with the sinking pencils, um, is this guy here. He's an Ema honey trap, 30 odd grams, 95 mils, absolutely sensational lure. You can see the finish on it, beautiful holographic finish, lovely action. These lures are generally fished with a pause, uh, a twitch and pause motion, pretty much like you would see used in barra fishing. Naturally it's going to be a little bit different because you're going to have a much longer rod, but they're generally not retrieved in a straight wind like you'd see a chrome slug retrieved or that sort of thing. Sensational uh, fish catching lures on a whole variety of species out there. So tailor are voracious and they're going to be all over themselves eating these things, but they'll catch tuna and they'll catch mackerel and they'll catch trevallies as well. Probably our all-time favourite is the Jewel Adagio, another 30 gram lure. Really skinny profile compared to that last one we just looked at. Sensational long casting design. So really the type of thing that'll cast almost as far as a chrome slug but a fish catching action far in excess of a chrome slug. One of the reasons why these lures uh, are so good and why we use them so much is that pretty much every fish that you toss them in front of and twitch them just wants to bite them. So naturally that's something that everybody should really want. Baste, another Japanese manufacturer, makes a classic thing uh, here. This is your Baste bungee cast. Another 30 gram lure, another sensational thing to have tied on the end of your outfit. Ema make a whole bunch of these. This is another version called the Ema Fletchette. This mixes it up a little bit. Got a spinner hanging off the tail here on a swivel. So naturally when this thing's retrieved through the water, this spinner's tw tw twirling and uh, flashing. And it's just gonna give you an added fish catching uh, attraction. Another one for the Ema sta stable is the uh, Ema Barbarossa. Um, another 30 odd gram lure, fabulous fish catch catching action as well. A lure that would also be used quite successfully in a straight uh, retrieve. Uh, in other words, rod pointed down the line is a really good enticing action without any input from the angler. All these lures that we're looking at have 
hooks that are marginal for the type of tackle that we would use at times. And certainly for big fish, you've got to think about either upgrading the hooks uh, to heavier trebles and perhaps single hooks as well. There's lots more of these sinking pencils out on the market. They'll range probably from around that 30 gram up to 50 and maybe even uh, 80 grams at times that you consider tailor sized lures. Uh, our go-to lure. If we try and one thing on the end of our rod these days to catch the biggest variety of species, it's got to be a sinking pencil. I wouldn't go anywhere without one. Something more familiar, of course, is a bib minnow lure. This guy here is a Jackson uh, lure and looks a bit like a barrel lure, but it's a fast sinking, long casting lure. So it'd be next to useless for barrel fishing because it just sinks straight into the snag. It's made for blue water fishing, it's made for beach fishing. You can cast this thing out a country mile now and just flat line retrieve it. So it's got a bib on it, that bib just going to give it a natural action. So you don't have to part any rod action, in fact it's probably counterproductive to do that. So slow, medium retrieve, wind, straight down the, the line if you like, with the rod pointing straight down the line and just wind in the fish. Oftentimes seen as a number one lure for a Spanish mackerel and a whole variety of pelagic casting in, in the minnow design lures, sensational thing. Probably the lure that started all for us is the Ema um, Heavy Surfer, another 30 gram lure, it's just quite compact, quite heavy. You see these things, they're not really that much different in size to the chrome slug that we're looking at. So you get an idea of why they're going to be such a long casting lure because they're compact and heavy things. That gives them a great uh, aerodynamic capability and they really do fire out. So again, bib minnow lure, no retrieve re uh, action needed, just a straight slow wind. Another option here is your Maria Duplex, slightly less expensive, not made in Japan and you know something that will give you uh, access to these sorts of fish without something that might break the budget. Very very latest is this guy here from Duo, Duo Blazon. Heaviest one of the lot, 40 grams, slightly bigger hooks, slightly bigger deeper diving bib, gives you a few more options out there. Man this thing will cast absolutely out of sight. Totally amaze anyone who sees you casting it because I presume you've got a, uh, a little mangrove jack style lure on thing weighs 40 grams, probably heavier than a lot of the chrome slugs people are, work, uh, are using. Absolutely fire out of sight, brilliant fish catching lure. So, next time you're down on the beach, you'll see people throwing lures. Thinking about what we're talking about here, it'll give you an idea of what they're doing and why they're doing it. We do it because we reckon it catches more fish than the trusty pilly on a gang hook. So. Wander down the beach, find some water, find some fish, give them a crack, you'll have a ball. Cheers.